Greetings and welcome to another episode of Parsing John. Today we're going to take a look at John chapter 1, verses 11 through... Can't find it. There we go. Uh, 12 in the Greek. And the first thing we're going to do is pull up our rubric. Refresh your memory of everything that we're looking for as we go through the Greek there. Okay, let's start by reading it aloud. Eista idia elthen kai ho idoi auton u paralebon. Hosoi de elabon auton. Edoken autois exusian tecna theu genestai. Tois pisteusin eis to onoma autu. Okay, let's go to our first clause. We want to find our verb first, and our verb will tell us what our subject should look like if we even have a subject. Very first word there is ace, and that's going to be a preposition, so we're going to create a bracket right there, a parent. And ace normally takes the accusative, but it is not our verb. Ta, idia, neither of those are a verb. And then we come to eilth in the last word in the clause. This will close off that prepositional phrase and give us our verb. We've got it. Epsilon nu here, which is a third person singular ending. And eilth is the stem of the aorist for this. I believe it is a second aorist. I haven't looked at that part of Greek in a long time. But anyway, aorist, active, and indicative. And that would mean he or she come uh, came. All right, and we don't have anywhere present in here a subject, so we would assume a subject from our previous clause, or one of our previous clauses, that is, and he is really the only option. All right, coming back to our prepositional phrase, we've got ta and idia, ta from ho, he, to, our articles in Greek. Masculine doesn't ever end in ta, and feminine also does not ever end in ta, but neuter in the nominative and accusative plural has ta, so this is going to be accusative, quite clearly, and plural neuter. Yeah, said plural twice. <clears throat> and ace means into, showing location, normally. And ta idia is an interesting word, because it sounds... And a lot like our word for idiot. If there's actually a connection there, I don't know. It's something one could look into. And this just means one's own. And since we've got a he as our subject, we know it's going to be his own. And why neuter? Well, it could be that John here is intending the reader to assume in into the sentence a neuter word to which idia, an adjective, would refer, but we don't have one, so we know that this is being used as a substantive. And since we're not exactly sure what he's referring to, it's not safe to just stick something in there, so leaving it as his own is the safest thing that we can do. We should do the his own. All right, end of clause. We should put he in there. Kai, that's just a conjunction. And hoi idioi, there is a clear nominative plural there, and it's going to be masculine of the, well, this is an article so it doesn't fit, but this one is going to be second declension, that's why it's so clear, and the, his own, his own do what? Auton's not a verb, so we can't do that. Ooh negates the action of the verb, so we can go ahead and pencil that in. Not paralabon, got O in here, which is either a first person singular or a third person plural verb. Taking a look at our subject, this is plural, so this is also going to have to be plural. Third person and plural, aorist and active indicative. And I think this is another, uh, whatever one this is, a first or second aorist, this is the same type of aorist. And this would mean to receive they received. No, e i v e d. Always make that mistake. All right, and they received what? Why a direct object? Auton here is going to be accusative, singular, masculine, or neuter. It's going to be masculine here because we'll every time we've had auton 
and had the same antecedent of auton be the subject of a verb. It's been ma it's meant masculine and it's referred to capitalized he, the light, aka God. All right, and his own did not receive him. We would say, okay. Period. That ends verse eleven, and then we can move on to verse twelve. Hosoi, we've got our nominative plural ending there again of the second declension. And this one means how great, as much, but in much in the singular, so it would be as many. And that one is going to fit best since we've got this as a subject. Taking a look ahead, we don't have any fit for a subject there, so this one is another substantive. This one probably would refer to people or men, so this one was also in all likelihood going to refer to the same subject as idioi here. So, as many, de is a conjunction, and it's, a, it's the, the weaker of our two options for but. Uh, and, in, interestingly, in older Greek, when uh, we had we found a day in the sentence, and in the very next sentence we found mu epsilon nu, they were acting as on the one hand, on the other. We don't have this in here. I don't remember if it ever happens, but if it does, it'll be interesting to see how that how John uses that. So a less powerful but. Okay, when we come to our verb here, on it's got the same ending here. It's missing the par, which means it has a slightly different meaning to it. Hairs are invading, sorry. I'm shedding like a dog. All right, so that's going to be third person and plural, aorist, active, and indicative. And this would be, again, take, receive, grasp, but as many, and in the aorist, took, received, and then our direct object is right here. A repeat of that one. I'm just going to draw a line over him. Comma. Edoken. We start off very first with our verb. We've got an epsilon nu there, which is a third person and singular ending. As with this one above, we've got an epsilon in front of the stem, which tells us that it's going to be either aorist or imperfect. The stem here, however, dok, tells us that it can't be the imperfect stem, so this one is going to be Aorist. Also, I don't think the ending fits. Active and indicative. All right. He gave. We know it should be capitalized because he's going to be the subject. It's the only logical thing within range up here. It's singular. Previously, we've had plural and plural subjects. That previous singular subject is going to be the same between these two. He gave. He has to give a direct object. As we take a look ahead, this doesn't work. Alpha nu there, that does work as a direct object. That's going to be accusative and singular and feminine. And this word means power and a couple other things. Um, authority, the choice, I think, is the most common meaning for it. However, in context, we know that choice is not a good option. Authority might be a good option, but power, this is based uh, going on the authority of the dictionary. Um, I'll read the title for you. A Greek English lexicon of the New Testament and other early Christian literature. And this is Walter Bowers' dictionary. Uh, New Testament, obviously. So according to that, in context of previous authors, we're, we want to choose power because we know that we have a high authority, a king or a, a ruler being the one doing the action. And we know that because we had, had go all the way back to verse 2 and know that this he right here is actually God. So, the way that this noun here is used when we have a authority like that is it's power to do something, not choice, maybe authority. All right, anyway, power. He gave power. One gives direct objects to indirect objects. And we take a look back. We've got oist right there. And that is a dative plural of the second declension, and it's going to be masculine or neuter. It's going to be masculine, we know, because this is masculine and this is masculine. They're plural, and in, they are in close vicinity to this. And this would just be 
to them. All right. Okay. He gave power to them. And normally when you're giving power to someone, you're giving it to them so that they can do something. So we'd like a look ahead. This is not a infinitive, which is what we would want to find here. Theu is also not an infinitive. When we come to Genesthai, and we've got our sthai ending there, which is an infinitive ending. And this one is going to be an aorist infinitive based on gene as our stem, or genes. I forget now. Aorist, and it's going to be, this comes from genomai, I think. So that's a deponent verb. And it is infinitive, naturally. This would be to become. And with infinitives and participles in language, they, they have a tense of their own, but it doesn't show uh, time like a normal verb. Instead, it shows time in relation to the main verb. So this main verb is an aorist tense, which puts it in the past. This is likewise an aorist tense, which puts it uh, normally, we would consider this before the action, but since this is, he gave something to become, you can't give... Anyway, the, the, the temporal business there doesn't really match for this to be happening beforehand. So instead, aorist here isn't telling us so much the time as the quality of the verb. And aorist normally introduces in participles or infinitives or imperatives a single action that is done once and completed. So have completed become, and only once. That's the idea we should be getting from Arist right there. All right, to become, to be what? Why? A predicate. And as we take a look ahead, this is the wrong case to be a predicate with anything in here. Sorry, not a predicate, brain failure there. Another direct object, this time the direct object, the infinitive predicate would be linking verb or calling verb there. So. Tecna right there could be nominative or accusative plural neuter. We've got a singular nominative doing this verb, so that's not going to work. And we want another direct object here, so having this as our accusative direct object makes most sense. This accusative is closest to its verb, and this accusative is closest to its verb. And you'll notice that the verbs are on opposite sides of the, this entire clause here, which is really great when they both take direct objects. And that way, when you put the direct objects side by side like that, normally the best way to do things is take the closest object with the closest verb. And it really clears up any confusion there when an author does this. And for that, we should thank them. All right, so this is going to be accusative. That is not how you spell accusative. Plural and neuter. And this means children. Not spelled that way either. Not spelling things well, sorry. And this ooh here tells us that this is a genitive and it is singular masculine, which makes sense, of God, comma. He gave to them power to become children of God. Toispisteusin to onoma autu. All right, so now we come to something that is a little bit uncertain. Pisteusin here could either be a third person plural present active indicative verb, or another option could be that it is a dative plural masculine present active participle. And we can't really be certain except that we have tois here. Tois being an article is normally something that can only modify a noun or a verbal noun. And a verb naturally is not a noun. We've got a verbal noun right there, but if this were a verb, tois could not be modifying this. Since this is dative plural, as a neuter or masculine, and this could be dative plural, it makes some sense for this one to be the same as that. Tois could, of course, just be standing in as a pronoun, if you will, if this were Homeric Greek. But this is not Homeric Greek, so that's a far less common thing to do. So we're going to take this as a dative plural masculine, present, active, participle. And this would be to, the, or, for clarity's sake in English, those. Believing. Okay, then we have a prepositional phrase. Ace, to onoma, autu. Autu doesn't match, to onoma, so ace cannot take it in there. The prepositional phrase ends there. We've got no main verb 
in this clause, which means it's a subordinate clause to this one. And that's going to take the accusative. We already know that this is nominative or accusative neuter. Since this is a preposition expecting an accusative, this can't be nominative. And ona ma there is neuter. So these two clearly go together and they fit as an accusative object of this preposition. So accusative, singular, and neuter the name. Okay, ao tu, u we already know is a genitive and singular ending of the second declension, normally of the second declension. This is going to be masculine, same person as, not our choice, auton, so on and so forth, of him. Common. That ends verse 12. So we've got our translation from the beginning. He came into the his own and his own did not receive him, but as many, and we would insert again for clarity, as took him or received him, he gave to them power to become children of God. To those believing into the name of him. Pretty choppy translation, but we've gone through all of it. Um, and there we go. That's verse 11 and 12 in our next Greek video. We'll, we'll tackle 13 and finish off the section. After that, we're going to take our all our two texts, our Latin and Greek, and compare them together. And that one's probably going to be two videos since we've got a lot of verses to go through. Okay, I hope taking a look at these two verses has been helpful for you, and I hope you join me next time. Farewell.